4-fluoroamphetamine is a substitute amphetamine whose effects fall between those of amphetamine and MDMA. It's a research chemical and has only been used since the 2000s. 4-FA is one of the more desirable research chemicals because it offers pleasant effects, though we don't know exactly how safe it is. Some of the positive effects include euphoria, mood improvement, increased talking, physical euphoria, disinhibition, increased empathy, stimulation, and increased sociability. The negatives can include jaw clenching, insomnia, appetite suppression, headache, anxiety, sweating, vasoconstriction, increased heart rate, and increased blood pressure. The effects are comparable to both MDMA and amphetamine. The intactogen activity is less pronounced than with MDMA, but it's more prominent than with amphetamine or methamphetamine. You can feel more appreciative of others and want to talk with people. Because it has reliably stimulating effects, some people prefer it to MDMA when dancing. Though, like MDMA, it can be somewhat calming rather than highly stimulating during the first few hours. It's often said to produce a cleaner stimulation than amphetamine. People can feel relatively calm in their body and not overly stimulated. The stimulation at common doses does not feel too uncomfortable or overwhelming. Although anxiety is possible, it seems more likely to reduce rather than increase anxiety at common doses. It's sufficiently different from MDMA that it offers pro-social effects, but may be a bit easier to communicate on. Physically, there can be pleasurable sensations of warmth and tingling around the body, and you may feel floaty when you try to move around. All of the significant perceptual and mood effects are more pronounced at higher doses, such as over 100 milligrams. When you take 50 to 80 milligrams, it ends up being even closer to amphetamine than MDMA. At those doses, it could be used as a productive stimulant, yet alternative stimulants are probably a better option. Because of the recreational effects and moderate impairment that appears with higher doses, productivity is not really enhanced, though you could return to a more productive state after the first few hours of strong recreational effects are gone. Some users find it has a wave-like nature. You may intermittently experience periods where the euphoria euphoria and other effects decline, but those periods only last a short time. The after effects of 4-FA seem less significant than with MDMA. During the onset and come down, some people find it smoother and less jarring than with MDMA. A study in the Netherlands gave some idea of the way users view the drug. Most took 100 to 150 milligrams and reported a duration of 4 to 8 hours. The effects were scored between MDMA and amphetamine. Compared to amphetamine, there was less less irritability, similar alertness, greater euphoria, and greater connectedness to others. Compared to MDMA, it was less intense, there was less confusion, there were fewer sensory changes, and the connectedness to others was reduced. The drug lasts for four to seven hours. Typically, the intactogen and recreational effects will last up to three to five hours, while stimulation could persist for longer. It's possible to remain stimulated for eight to nine hours or more, and insomnia could take longer to disappear. The Onset is 20 to 40 minutes. 4-FA is a substitute amphetamine with a fluorine placed at the 4 position on the amphetamine backbone. It operates as a monoamine releaser and reuptake inhibitor, affecting norepinephrine, serotonin, and dopamine. It can significantly elevate dopamine levels in rats with lower effects on serotonin. The dopamine to serotonin ratio for 4-FA offers more serotonergic activity than you'd find with amphetamine, but dopamine and norepinephrine are still more prominently affected in rats given dex dextroamphetamine, 4-FA fully substituted, indicating similar effects in both animals and humans. Overall, this means its pharmacology is similar to amphetamine, but it does offer more serotonergic activity. A light dose is 25 to 50 milligrams. A common dose is either 50 to 100 or 100 to 150 milligrams, depending on the degree of recreational effects you're looking for, and a strong dose is over 150 milligrams. The drug was synthesized in the early 1940s, but it wasn't used by humans until many decades later. Some studies in animals began by the 1960s, with 4-FA and other 4-substitute amphetamines being investigated. It was reportedly found in a forensic seizure for the first time in Germany in 2003. More reports of its presence in the EU appeared by 2007 and 2008. Most of the 4-FA in Europe has been detected since 2009, with it expanding to a larger set of countries. By that time, 
time, there were multiple instances of it being sold in ecstasy tablets in Switzerland. At least 12 European countries reported its presence by 2010. The Netherlands has had a particularly notable presence of 4FA. Initially, it appeared to come from organized crime groups that were selling it in place of other drugs, including amphetamine and MDMA. Between 2007 and 2013, there was eventually a decline in misrepresentation. Because the drug is pleasurable on its own, 4FA has been intentionally used by many people. At least by 2013, intentional purchases were more common than misrepresentation in the Netherlands. Over a dozen forensic cases were reported in Denmark by 2011. They included drug driving and a rape. In 2011, it was detected in a number of hair samples in Switzerland. The samples had been collected in 2009 and 2010. Those that tested positive for amphetamines or MDMA were analyzed again. Based on the reanalysis, 4% of samples had 4FA. In 2013, it was among the top four detected research chemicals submitted to drug testing facilities in the Netherlands. Similar results showed up in Spain, which reported 4FA and 2CB were some of the top novel drugs, and a survey of more than 3,000 people in the Netherlands indicated it was as popular as ketamine and GHB. Throughout Europe, there has been a variation in its usage. While it was fairly common in the Netherlands, it seemed less popular in places like Italy. Between 2014 and 2016, multiple cases of cerebrovascular and cardiovascular issues attached to 4FA made some people concerned about the drug. Those medical problems, including death, have not always been analytically confirmed, so it's difficult to figure out the drug's contribution, but it does appear high doses could result in severe health issues. 4FA became a controlled substance in the Netherlands in 2017, which could impact its popularity. Elsewhere, it continues to be used to some degree in Europe and North America. It's unscheduled in the United States, though there are state controls in Arizona, Florida, Louisiana, and Virginia. Laws covering 4FA exist in the UK, Canada, Germany, Israel, and the Netherlands, among other countries. Because it's a research chemical, we don't know how safe 4FA is. For this reason, it's important to use common doses, limit your frequency of use, and avoid combinations. Neurotoxicity has been mentioned as a possible concern, but so far, the animal research does not support its existence. Due to the existence of serotonin depletion and an unclear safety profile, it's best to reduce your usage so that you don't take it more than every month. Waiting even longer, such as two or three months, could be a good idea. If you use too much, cardiovascular issues, seizures, rhabdomyolysis, confusion, agitation, and hyperthermia are possible. We have multiple cases showing significant hyperthermia and cardiovascular or cerebrovascular issues. Some instances of cerebral hemorrhage have been connected to the drug, though it seems likely that those cases came from a pre-existing susceptibility or an unnecessarily high dose. Some of the risky combinations include other stimulants, psychedelics, MAOIs, and tramadol. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comments. You can also email me with questions. The Drug Classroom is exclusively funded by donations. Listeners like you make TTC possible. If you want to support, please do so on Patreon.